This video is about the uh, chainsaw I've been using to cut up this down tree. Which is over here. That tree right over there snapped off in a storm two uh, winters ago. And blue, fortunately, didn't blow onto the house, didn't fall on the house, but it snapped off because it's rotted and it fell in a line along here, you know, going this direction. I ran into problems. I've had this chainsaw for six or seven years. A steel MS-362C. And this time when I fired it up, it starts fine. It starts great. It's been a great chainsaw. I don't use it that much. Maybe one week a year, two weeks a year. I mean, when you add all the days up, 10, 10 days a year, 20 days a year maybe. Um, but it's got plenty of horsepower for what I need, and it starts. It's reliable. But this time... The chain was slipping even at idle and I thought in previous saws I've had there's an adjustment screw the idle speed is too high you need to lower the idle speed to um, prevent that clutch from kicking out and engaging the chain well this has a computer onboard computer the C 362 C means computer and you have to reset the computer and there's really not much documentation that I could find, nothing easy to find anyway. I finally called the dealer and talked to the deer dealer, a steel dealer too. I talked to one of the guys up there, Rob, who said, oh, you have to run it with the choke on for exactly 90 seconds. And then that signal is basically a restart of that computer. It'll reinitialize and go back to what it's... Uh, so, so it's not slipping. You don't need to replace the clutch. You don't need, there's no idle. You can't adjust the idle. The computer does it all. Um, so anyway, I'm out here. Here's some of the rounds from a pine tree that was cut down a few years ago. I still need to split those. So I segregated into brush piles, which will get chipped or maybe burnt. Here's some of the oak. This is an oak tree. Um, this is the end. That end looks like, I don't know, that's about two feet across, 30 inches across, which would be 80 centimeters. And here's the end, you can kind of see the rot. I'm not exactly sure how far up it's gonna go, but I'll cut it up. Then I came up here and uh, one of the branches went into the ground when it fell. So here's all this. My forearms are sore. That saw, even though it's got aluminum in it, it's still kind of heavy on the forearm. So we'll chip all this stuff, all the bush, all the branches, and then split all this, the logs. And they'll have to dry for at least a year. They're still kind of wet. I didn't put my moisture tester on them, but this, they split like they were still a little wet. So what I end up doing, I just stack them in rows here and then put a piece of tin on top of them that keeps them pretty dry and they'll air out for 18 months probably before I burn them so got this pile which will get burned this coming year and then that pile which will get burned this coming year I might have to buy wood because I don't know if I'm gonna have enough dry wood for this fall for this coming winter I ended up buying this thing I've split by hand before, but come on, you, it, it just kill you to have to split this all and then stack it. So a splitter. Oh, and then the other log I've got to split, as long as I'm doing this tour. Um, off the side of this tree, it split off probably four or five years ago, and it fell if you can see I've cut the end of it off to get it out of this little driveway here but that's probably two feet so 60 centimeters 70 centimeters in diameter and it goes on for 20 feet six meters so I gotta cut that up and split that and as well as this other piece of oak that'll get cut and split and stacked to dry 
reason I've got time to do this is because I've had a hard time coordinating. I needed a permit in order to spread the turkey litter on my ground from the DNR, or Department of uh, Natural Resources, and the permitting process is fouled up in some office politics. So they're finally getting around to spreading it. And then their truck broke down. So I, anyway, so my schedule has been flexible. I've been, I'm adjusting uh, as we go. Uh, we took the disc out to one of the fields and we were hoping to disc in the turkey litter into the corn stalks and then the oats will go onto that, into that ground, transition oats and red clover underneath. But um, we'll start that tomorrow, I guess. Well, my dad's going to be disking. I think I'm going to be over here with my nephew um, splitting this wood up. So, the birds are out. It's about 65 degrees. Spring might actually be here. It's April 25th or so, I think, around end of April, last week in April. So there's red-winged blackbirds, I think, and grackles. I've seen chickadees here. No swallows yet. A lot of robins. But it's nice to hear everything coming back to life. Of course, the creek runs runs along here too. So those trees are growing up around the little creek. Well, thanks for watching. Carl's doing a lot better too. Homemade diet of uh, ground turkey, lentils, rice, and cabbage. He's uh, hanging in there, he's doing well.